Hello, welcome back to Chi Square Test. Let us import our question and get back to business. Here is our question. Now, if we have a look at this question, what is it saying? A process generates four kinds of outputs. That is A, B, C, and D in ratio 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there is some kind of process which generates these outputs in ratios 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there will be one parts of A, two parts of B, three parts of C and four parts of D. The newly appointed manager calls in for a sample of 450 grams. Now, when he calls in a sample of 450 grams, he is expecting that A, B, C, D should be in ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 and observes that 15% of it is A, B is 25%, while both C and D are in equal quantities. Test the consistency of sample at 10% level of significance. So, I have a sample of 450 grams which should have been in this ratio, but it is carrying some other ratio. So, let me first of all solve the situation. First of all, let me understand the situation. What is exactly happening over here? So what is happening? A, B, C and D. I have these four items or these four variants. A, B, C and D. They should have been in what ratio? They should have been in ratio 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. If they should have been in this ratio, so what should have been their proportion? Now, if you remember elementary mathematics, if these are the ratios, what will be their proportions? Their proportions will be proportion for A. Proportion of A would be 1 upon 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That is 4 plus 3, 7 and 3, 10. So, it would be 1 by 10. What will be the proportion of B? It will be 2 by 10. What will be the proportion of C? It will be 3 by 10 and D would be 4 by 10. They will always be in this proportion. Whenever I get gather any sample, ideally it should be in this proportion because it is given that they are following a ratio of 4 is to, sorry, 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4. Now when I pick up a sample of 450, how much should I expect? Quantity out of 450. How much should I expect? Quantity out of 450. Expected quantity. Let me put it that way. Expected quantity out of 450. How much should I expect? I should expect 1 out of 10 proportions to be A. So, what will be the quantity I expect for A? Quantity expected for A. How much will it be? Remember this proportion 1 by 10 of 450. Now, because I have my proportion as 1 by 10, so I expect that out of 450 also I will be having 1 out of 10 parts over here. So, 1 out of 10 1 by 10 of 450. 1 by 10 of 450 is what? It is 45. I expect to have 45 grams of A. 1 tenth of 450. I expect to have 2 by 10 of 450 for B. Isn't that the case? 2 by 10 of 450. It will be 90. Similarly, 3 by 10 of 450 would give me 135 and 4 by 10 of 450 would give me 180. So, my 450 grams should be distributed in these quantities ideally expected. This is very important term expected. I expect it to be this much. I expect them to be this much. 
okay so this is what i expect but in reality they are not like this in reality they are following some other proportions what are those sample of 450 grams of output and observes that 15% of it is a so when the manager goes and inspects that sample he finds that 15% of that sample is a so can we have observed observed amount of a how much is observed a see this was expected a why was this were why was this expected a because we were expecting that they will be following this ratio so it was expected a but in reality a has come out to be 15% 15% of 450 grams was a so observed a will be 15% of 450 how much is that it is 67.5 so observed quantity of a is 67.5 okay can we have observed quantity of b observes that 15% was a and b is 25% b is 25% so observed quantity of b is 25% of 450 it becomes 25% of 450 this comes out to be 112. So, hundred and twelve point five. Now, I was expecting A to be forty-five because it was one out of ten proportions. One out of ten proportions, it should have been forty-five out of four fifty. It should have been forty-five, but it came out as sixty-seven point five because it was fifteen percent. B was expected to be ninety. because it was two proportions out of 10 but it came out to be 25% so it came out to be 112 and then c and d are in equal quantities c and d both are in equal quantities so how much is gone 25% is gone so 15% is gone 25% is gone so a and b together a and b constitute for 40% so how much will together c and d constitute for 60% because 40% is gone 40% is divided between a and b remaining 60% will be divided between c and d and how is it divided while both c and d are in equal quantities which means of this 60 30% is c And thirty percent is D. So let me find out quantities of C and D. Thirty percent of four fifty, making it thirty percent of four fifty, giving me one thirty five. So C is also one thirty five. Quantity of C, and in fact D is also. One thirty-five because they both are thirty percent. So how much is it? One thirty-five each. One thirty-five a piece. Okay. Let me quickly check. How much is this? Forty-five and ninety is one thirty-five. One thirty-five and one thirty-five is two seventy. Two seventy and eighty is three fifty and four fifty. This is four fifty. Four fifty should have been divided. Yes, it was divided in this fashion, but. in reality it got divided into some other percentages some other ratios so let me check how much is this this will make an 8190 sorry 180 180 and 270 making it 450 fine so we have 450 450 has been divided in this fashion so now 
if you look carefully just by dividing this we have our expected and observed figures can we go ahead and find chi square for this will that be very easy yes it should be very easy because now i know what is my observed quantity and what is my expected quantity should we recap once again how did we how did we find now generally it happens that they are divided in ratio 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 so 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 is their general ratio if ratios are 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 then proportions become 1 by 10 2 by 10 3 by 10 and 4 by 10 for each now if it is taking 1 out of 10 pieces then out of 450 it will take 1 by 10 of 450 that is 45 we will take 2 by 10 of 450 that is 90 and then c will take 3 by 10 of 450 which is 135 and 180 and then this was expected because this is the expected amount isn't that the case this is the expected amount but when the manager called in for a sample of 450 grams he saw that a was only uh, sorry a was 15 percent so i went ahead and found how much is 15% of 450? It is 67.5. So the manager observed that A is 67.5, B is 112.5, C is 135 and D is 135. Depending on these percentages. Now let me go ahead and find out chi-square values. Where are my chi-square values coming from? Here are they coming from. We have observed frequencies and expect uh, observed volumes and expected volumes. So I can very well go ahead and find out those values should we make a clearer table uh, we have a b c and d uh, we can work it out over here let us make a table over here here is a table now let us go ahead and fill in some values a b c d observed expected observed minus expected observed minus expected square observed minus expected square upon e what were the values that were observed observed were 67.5 112.5 and 112.5 then 135 each 135 each and here we had 45, 90, 135 and 180. 45, 90, 135 and 180. So can we find out O minus E? O minus E for this first case would become 22.5. So again it will become 22.5. This it will be 0 and this it will be 45 rather minus 45. Now can we find out O minus E square? Yes, O minus E square. This one will become 506.25. Similarly, this will become 506.25. This will remain at 0 and square of 45 would give you 20, 25. So, now our last column which is 500 and O minus E square divided by E. So what is my O minus E square in first case? It is 506.25. This divided by 45 gives me 11.25. The next case again I have a 506.25 which divided by E. That is 90. Gives me 5.625 this will give me a 0 and last one will give me a 2025 divided by 180 giving me 11.25 and if I add them all I'll get my chi-square practical what is chi-square practical it is nothing but summation of all these values isn't that the case you add all these values and you get your chi square what is chi square in our case 28.125 
so my chi square practically is 28.125 now let me find out chi square theoretical now for chi square theoretical what do we need we need degrees of freedom degrees of freedom are n minus 1 how many different elements was I studying a b c and d 1 2 3 and 4 so my degrees of freedom will be n minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 making it a 3 and what was my level of significance or alpha level of significance or alpha is given as 10 percent so I'll take alpha as 10 percent or 0 0.1 so on these two values I will check my chi-square theoretical value so to check the value let us import the table here there is a table let us go and check now what is the scenario degrees of freedom 3 and alpha of 0.1 alpha of 0.1 degrees of freedom 3 so my chi-square will come down to be 6.251 now can we have analysis of this analysis of this would suggest that chi square practical is more than chi square theoretical and because it is more it should have been less but now it is more because it is more therefore null hypothesis null hypothesis is rejected why is it rejected because it is more it is being rejected because of the symbol if this were greater than then this would have been accepted but because this is more so it is rejected and what do I mean when I say that null hypothesis is rejected I mean that there is significant difference there is significant difference in sample values and expected values so this was our analysis of the given question that the values that you have observed what were the values that you observed 15 percent being a 25 percent being b while both remaining equal quantities this is not what i was expecting what we were expecting was 1 is to 2 is to 3 is to 4 but we got something else hence null hypothesis is rejected and sample is considerably or significantly different thanks for watching bye bye